Um, I want to thank you all for joining us um, today. My name is Michelle Rivera Span, and I'm a senior marketing manager at Taylor and Francis. Um, I oversee the library marketing group for North America for the books business. Um, I'm very happy to have partnered with Choice in our panel today um, for the development of the white paper that will be um, discussed during this session. You know, as a publisher and as someone in marketing, um, I recognize the challenges that libraries um, encounter when marketing their library services. So what we want to do is like really take the opportunity to unite and encourage librarians from different institutions to share their experiences. So our lively lunch session today you know, is going to provide a forum where we can facilitate further um, discussions on sharing information and examples for our customers and you guys to put into practice. Um, so I know we want to get, we have a good session scheduled and we have, want to have time for questions. I'm going to go ahead and turn it right over to Bill, who will be your moderator, and we'll do the introductions. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, everybody. Um, let me get my timer going here. All right. Gently flipping here. Um, my name is Bill Mickey. I'm the editorial director at Choice. And we're, uh, for those of you who may not know, we're a publishing group within um, ACRL. And we publish Choice Reviews, uh, resources for college libraries, uh, CC Advisor, which is our newest uh, product, which is um, a collaboration with the Charleston Advisor. Um, and also, along with ACRL, we host a ton of webinars. So do check us out on choice360.org for, for more information on what we do. Um, we have an excellent group of panelists who will uh, introduce themselves in a moment. Um, but I just wanted to provide a little bit of background on how this panel came together. Um, choice recently, be, recently began its own research operation, uh, fielding surveys on topics we think are relevant and important to um, our audience. And these surveys often make their way into a published white paper, uh, which analyzes the results and puts them in context. We've got one on institutional repositories, another on open educational resources, and this one, um, which looks at the evolution of marketing and outreach and how a selection of the choice audience performs uh, related initiatives, um, which was co-authored by Jen and Sabine, who are on our panel today and underwritten by Taylor and Francis. The survey and white paper are created wholly independently um, without direct input from the sponsor. So this is an editorially driven um, project, uh, meaning the team of choice determines the topic, creates the survey questions, and produces the white paper. Um, even so, we're grateful for the support of Taylor and Francis and the opportunity um, to discuss the findings of the survey with you today. Um, and I think most of you got a copy of the, the print of the hard copy of the white paper itself. Um, as well as talk about some of the ways our panelists are approaching um, what I think can still be fairly regarded as a, a burgeoning practice, uh, that of marketing and outreach. Um, so we'll cover what marketing and outreach actually means um, in, in, in practice, in execution. Um, we'll take a look at some of the top line findings of the survey um, and our panelists will describe you know, what those top line findings mean to them, what marketing and outreach means to them in practice, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to share some, some good takeaways for you um, to develop at your own institutions. So real quick, uh, panelists, we'll start with you, Lisa, if you want to introduce yourselves and your institutions. My name is Lisa Martin. Thank you, Jen. Um, I'm the coordinator of outreach at the University of Houston. And the University of Houston is a large um, library, large uh, institution with around 46,000 students. It's in a urban area, the fourth largest city in the United States. And the library is both fairly large and represents a fairly diverse group of people. Um, I coordinate and supervise the team of outreach, which is in liaison services. So I supervise a team of three librarians, and we work on outreach, and we also have liaison responsibilities. 
I'll go into that further, but I just want to give you a general sense of who I am and where I'm coming from. Hi, my name is Sabine Dantis. I'm the outreach librarian at Lynn University Library. We're a, uh, about 3,000 students, and we're a small nonprofit uh, private college in Boca Raton, Florida. And part of my duties are promoting the library as an intellectual center of campus uh, through publications, events, programming, marketing, uh, anything that you can name, name um, that's related to marketing and outreach, outreach um, tabling and whatever we can to market the, the library to these students. Um, we have uh, about 10 librarians on staff, so we're not 10, but 10 staff members, sorry. My name is, sorry, I'm just going to, so much easier. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jen Park. I'm the Assistant Librarian for Access and Outreach Services at Mount St. Mary College in Newburgh, New York. We are a nonprofit Catholic Dominican institution um, that is private. We have 2,500 FTE, and I am the marketing slash outreach person for our library. We have five full-time librarians and then a director who also has some marketing and outreach responsibilities, but most of it does fall to myself. Excellent, thank you. All right, so to begin, I thought we would sort of set the stage with, um, you know, this might sound rudimentary, but I think it's actually important. Um, looking at um, sort of the state of marketing and outreach. Where are we now? How did we get here? Um, and, and talk a little bit about the general ideas of what marketing and outreach is and are. Um, the two words are often used in conjunction very often. So, um, you know, the, the, the meanings might get sort of lost um, in a sense. So let's um, talk about Marketing versus outreach, I mean, what do those terms mean to you in, in your respective organizations? Um, how are they related? How are they not? Um, and, and Lisa, why don't we continue with you? So one of the first things I want to do is point people to an article that was released recently from some folks at Illinois called Exploring the Culture of Engagement for Liaison Librarians at a Research University. And I'm happy to give you that full citation later. Uh, that article has some provocative definitions of the difference between marketing, outreach, and engagement. And I hope to come back to this later, but I'm seeing a lot of people talk about engagement alongside marketing and outreach as well. So um, those definitions I think are very interesting. As I said, provocative, not fully something that I agree with, but I think they're worth taking a look at. So one of the things I'll say is that at a large university, there are often people already doing marketing within the library. So for us, um, the outreach team was created last year, um, right before Hurricane Harvey, and we um, had to make a space for ourselves. So what we found was there was a campus engagement committee which did orientations and you know finals events and that sort of thing. And so we didn't have that sort of opportunity for outreach. And we had a communications department which focused on social media, and it focused on you know, PR, that sort of thing. So we didn't do that kind of marketing. But what we found was that there was a space to work directly with campus units, such as athletics, and we work with the Honors College, we work with career services, et cetera. So these sort of non-academic units, but who have a very direct impact on academics. Um, so we partner with them. We see outreach as a relationship-based sort of thing, um, whereas marketing can sometimes be the messaging and the materials. Um, that's a distinction that my panelists don't necessarily fully agree with. Um, but I wanted to bring that out, that we saw our space as being one of people and one of relationships for outreach. Um, so we work very closely with faculty. We work very closely with these non-academic units. Um, and I think that makes sense because we are coming out of liaison services, which is a people-based department if it's going well. Thank 
you. Um, so marketing and outreach um, at my campus, which is vastly smaller than Lisa's because we are 2,500, as I stated earlier. Um, in terms of marketing and outreach within our library, um, the marketing is generally of the physical items as well as the, um, the promotional materials, the flyers, the posters, um, emailing, um, as well as partnering with the college's marketing department. Um, our marketing department will produce some promotional materials. However, they are very much overwhelmed with, of course, their work um, for the college. And so um, I have worked with them in order to um, learn the different types of programs that they're using to produce those materials and so that I can take that on myself. Um, in terms of outreach, I focus more so on the outreach aspect as working with students, staff, and faculty. Um, in addition to departments as a whole. Um, and so we bring them together, of course, um, in the most obvious way in that it's myself that's doing so much of this. Um, and then we just, you know, when I say we, I mean the library as a whole tries to um, just put forth our best efforts in terms of um, creating outreach in various other areas such as information literacy instruction, um, going out to a uh, happy hour, you know, with the different faculty and so on and so forth in order to um, put forth our best efforts in, in building those relationship relationships. Um, as far as my library, um, I found that um, when I came in, there was absolutely nothing to build on. There was no marketing plan. There was no strategy to market to students. So one of the first things that I decided to do was to create a marketing plan. And I based my marketing plan on my library's strategic plan. And of course, my library's sorry, strategic plan is based on the institutional plan of my university. So I was able to uh, line up my marketing um, strategies and tactics along with uh, my um, institution. So, um, you know, uh, one thing about outreach I would say is that it's uh, marketing is strategic, but m outreach is not strategic. It's really, it's not something that you can tell someone, hey, do it this way. You know, you have to be basically pull all the people skills out of the bag and really use them and um, use them and and promote the library to the different um, people that you're um, liaisoning to. Um, whether it be this college of education, you reach out to them and do as much as you can. That's what I've been doing in my um, university. So I basically look at outreach as, you know, I have my table, but I'm not, I'm not concerned about, you know, numbers more so. I'm just concerned about people saying, oh, the library was there in that building. And, or the library was in my dorm last night. So it, it kind of keeps the library in people's brains. And also um, outreach for me is, uh, you know, social media as well. So. I use social media as an outreach tool, not really a marketing tool. I don't look at it that way. So I don't feel the pressure to maintain, um, you know, like, uh, like, oh, we don't have enough likes. It's not about that. It's just about being out there in uh, another aspect, so. Excellent. Lisa, I wanted to circle back with you real quick on something you mentioned um, and, and the, the way you're partnering with the non-academic units. And I'm wondering if you could, uh, um, describe that a little bit more and, and why the, why the non-academic units and what they offer in that, in that relationship. Sure. So a lot of times when you have a liaison model, you have liaisons to academic departments. But in a liaison model, you often lose your non-academic units. You might get the writing center, right? There's an obvious partnership. But who's working with athletics? who's working with career services as we transition students to their next stage. So for us, we had sort of um, this combined team that was instruction and outreach. And when we split it and said outreach is a priority on its own, what happened was we were able to transition these relationships. And we have a team, right? There's a team of four of us. And so each member of the team has taken their strength. Um, so we have a former student athlete on our team. And so he is the person who works with athletics. We do office hours over there. He set up a new system that um, does on-demand consultations. And so we are the front line. We are the team of people that these student athletes see so that we can directly impact a campus priority. 
which is to keep our student athletes athletically, um, sorry, not athletically, but academically competitive. <laughs> athletically too, but that's a different problem. I cannot help them. Um, so we really see that you know, there are these gaps, right, that we don't necessarily um, reach out through a traditional model um, to these non-academic units. We also work with you know, academic units too, but that's where you see the gaps, right? So it's a sense of going where the student is rather, yeah. Yeah, and I see. So I'm actually, we do have a practice by which um, all the librarians at my institution are liaisons to academics as well as um, support services. And so I am the liaison to um, athletics as it turns out. And so one of the things that I'll do is um, I'll meet with the, all the coaches and my focus when meeting on them is not only to provide information as to how we can support their athletes, but also the coaches will um, provide prospective um, students and their parents tours. And so I want to highlight those various areas in the library that they should be talking about. You know, that we do have a 24 hour space and that um, we do offer these one on one consultations. Um, so hopefully that me providing that outreach to um, the, uh, the coaches, they're in turn providing further outreach to those students um, and prospective students as well. <laughs> Well, in my university, we have, we call it the co-curricular liaison. So we, what we've done was divided amongst, uh, um, we've started this just this year. We divided amongst everyone on staff, like, you know, what areas do you think you could reach out to, you know, like we just kind of opened it up and some people said, because before it was just me reaching out to everybody and I have really reached out to everybody. So, but there, when you have one person that can focus on one group, I think it's much better. Um, I've decided, um, well, I've done with the athletes, I've done, um, well, I focus more on the at-risk student athletes. So there's at-risk student athletes at Lynn that maybe are making, you know, they have like a 2.0 or, you know, they're really gonna go there if they, if they don't have, um, you know, help. And so I've reached out to their coordinator and we've been able to like do some sessions and information literacy sessions with them in the evenings where we could like kind of say, you know, we were part of trying to get the student athletes up. Um, also as well, the international students as well, making sure that I email them directly and not just, you know, rely on, and, you know, uh, on a poster in the library or on, you know, just emailing their, um, their uh, coordinators directly and making sure that they get the information that they, um, that they need about the library to use the library. Okay. Yes. Sabine, I just want to stick with you for a quick minute, um, and if you could just Briefly, um, describe. You mentioned um, you, you basically built your marketing plan yes. from scratch. And, yeah. And if you could t briefly talk a little bit about what went into that and how you prioritize things. Um, I know you did a situational analysis and a yeah. SWOT analysis. Yeah. Maybe talk a little bit about how that came together. Um, what I did was I just um, kind of. I did a SWOT, number one. Um, the library already had a SWOT, which was great in their um, strategic plan. So it wasn't like I was you know, creating that from scratch, but I added some more things that I noticed um, through reading their past research, um, reading reports, going back into you know, the, the shared drive and just reading reports from past librarians and just making sure I knew everything and just asking um, librarians for anecdotal things like, you know, what was going on before, what have you guys done, who was really doing anything, if there was anything happening. And so from there, I was able to like create a situation analysis. And so what I did was I created a background first, which is most marketing plans have a background. And so I created a background and then I went into creating a situation analysis like this is what's going on now. So I've had three marketing plans since I've started four years ago. and. Um, I've been able to like build upon each one in the situation analysis, like giving them like, this is what we've done, this is where we are, this is how we're gonna continue forward. And then I, I divide my, um, the sections into, right now I'm doing more, um, add, I combined a lot of things like communications and you know, mm -hmm. other things, but I don't wanna go into too much detail about that. But no, that's, that's I have it with me if you wanna see it. That's great, and we are, we'll, we'll save some time for questions. Um, at the end of the session. So if anyone wants to follow up, we'll have time then. Okay, so um, we've set the stage a little bit. We've dug into um, what our panelists are, a bit into our, how our panelists are handling their marketing and outreach activities at their, at their institutions. 
Um, and I, I want to look at um, some of the top line results now of, of the survey um, and, and talk a little bit about why those results are the way they are and, and um, how they may or may not reflect what's going on at our, our panelist institutions. Um, one of the def um, trends that we noticed coming out of the survey um, were uh, we asked about, um, you know, to list the grade the main objectives of uh, the respondents' marketing and outreach activities, um, and the top two um, were uh, increased participation in instruction, research, and reference services that collected 41 percent of responses, and then the second right behind that was demonstrate value and or impact of library on institutional goals and priorities, which got about a 30 percent response. Um, the rest of the objectives, as you know, you can see from the question um, um, in the survey, just fall off from there. Um, however, though, if you if you average out some of the responses, um, you know, digital resource promotion is a, is a pretty close third. Um, so my question to the panel, um, and Jen, maybe we'll start with you: Is is anything interesting about that services priority? How does that contrast? Um, with with promoting resources, or um, do you see that as maybe a combined type of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I think the promotion of actual resources happens during the time spent on instruction, reference, and research service. Um, I like to consider this the opportunity to promote um, resources as just always being there. Um, you. I mean, just in, in meeting with students and meeting with faculty, um, at any time, you have the ability to, to work that into a conversation, right? Um, in much of our library outreach, we are demonstrating um, the value of the library on the institutional go goals through our programming, um, in the creation of them, in um, talking about those um, services and, and those resources as well. Um, did that mostly answer? Mm -hmm. Want yep. me to keep going? I can pass it off. We'll, we'll, we'll go back and forth okay. a little bit. Yeah, we'll okay. continue. <laughs> sure. So this result didn't surprise me because I think of it as a sort of a virtuous cycle. So you've got um, people who want that face time with users, virtual or not, um, which is instruction and research consultations. And then through um, the marketing and promotion of these, then during that, we see the promotion, as Jen mentioned, of our resources. This is how you will succeed.